Hey, yo, everybody, welcome to the Amalgam Games Lab. I am your host, Shannon Hagler, alongside Keena Johnston. Endgame hurt me. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. We'll yep. talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Um, welcome to the Amalgam Games Lab, where we talk about the gaming industry and games at large. But first, some housekeeping. If you enjoy what you watch, please like, share, subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below or email us at amalgamshow at gmail.com. We are all over the internet at The Amalgam Show. That is Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Yep. Hey, we have a podcast app, podcast feed, yep. iTunes, Spotify. iTunes, Spotify, and you should be able to like, I think it's syndicated from there. Cool. From yeah. ITunes. So most Android devices pull from the iTunes thing, so you're good there. Yep. Um, and also we're on Patreon. I sort of know if that thing, how that dip. Yep. Yeah, we need a discuss that we're gonna figure that out um and also check out the website i should add that in the rundown yes add the website check the website i've got my review of kingdom hearts 3 and anthem, anthem. Up on my website and i did a article about all the like physical stuff like you want the usb-c article that's it i fucking it's, it's i got a google USB-C. pixel and that's all i talk about now it's it's USB-C. USB-C. yeah if um, the switch can do it so can Tony. And we're going to try and put out more articles as we go along, but please check them out. Um, thank you. And also check out the Amalgam Show later this week. We will have the regular Amalgam Show. We will also be having an Avengers Endgame spoiler cast. Yep. We are going to be talking for a long time this afternoon. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's dive right in. What you been playing? I've been playing Final Fantasy X. You have been playing Final Fantasy X. We were up there. Watch. I was up there watching you play a little bit of yeah. it. Just the sphere grid stuff. Yeah. Um, how, my, how, how's it going? I am really enjoying it. Um, it's a it's, fantastic game. It, it is. And it's really good on the Switch as well. Like... I showed you the quick, the quick heal function, which yes. I think just yeah, really neat. That's really like, smart. Like more touchscreens should do that. If it ever came to phones, like that would yeah. be a great thing to have in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like it should be an option just in every game. Like, like it's a great quality a, of a life thing. A quick heal option in every type of RPG yeah. would be awesome. Like, if I just have like a combination of buttons, I can just tap and boom, I'm yeah. healing. I mean, some games do that now, where they like put a a healing item on I'm thinking like Darksiders does this where up on the D-pad is like use your inventory yeah um, and you can like switch between what they are but down on the D-pad is always using your heal item yeah so you don't need to cycle through to find your heal item you just yeah. get down on the D-pad and boom you're healing yeah. so that'd be cool yeah um, but how you been enjoying the game it's good um it's a game like it is Final Fantasy X is a very PS, uh, 2001 PS2 game yes um, but even then, it still looks great. A couple of issues with just a general upgrade of the character models, but that's just the remastering process. Yeah. Especially when you consider that Square didn't keep a bunch of their resource uh, sources, source mm-hmm. codes. Yes. So they go and like reverse engineer a bunch of shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's very different coming off Nine, especially because Nine is a classic. It is classic, classic. Yes. And then, but it's also like similar in terms of like it is following the story of this summoner. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that's the point of that. It is, which it's very like tropey in Final Fantasy yes. like let's follow this like to the point Final Fantasy 1 does it's not about her but she's in it of um what's the job she's not a summoner Sarah Princess Sarah yes like yes. she is an important character in that even though she you yeah. see it like three summon, times summon magic is always very key to the Final Fantasy lore yeah. in general yeah um, even as recent as uh, what's the chops in 15 yeah, I mean, even 13. 13 is all about summoning as well. Yeah. It's all about summoning. Yeah. Um, 13 Trilogy is all about summoning. Yeah, 12, not so much, but they use it as another <coughs> conduit to talk about other parts of the world. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 yeah, it's always just a, a nice um, an underlying current across all of them. How's the voice acting rubbing you? It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's the, my biggest thing is more the lip sync, is that it's not synced. Yes. Um, but yeah. I don't know if it's synced to Japanese or if that's if it's synced to... If it's not... I believe most of the issues from the syncing come from that the lips are designed to work with the Japanese translation and they just dubbed over the top of it. Um, they tried to get as close as they could. Yeah, sometimes it's like pretty uh, pretty like synced up and then yeah. other times you're like, what? Yeah. But like, again, old video game, I'm used to that. Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Like, it just seems to be the, the biggest hang up about Final Fantasy X for most people is the voice acting. And I'm like, it's like one of the first games to ever be fully voice acted, like top to bottom. Oh, yeah. Like, like even the NPC dialogue is. Yeah. Um, like it's yeah. 
really, really comprehensive that way, and it was on a PS2. Yeah. So when the talent and the writing wasn't there. Yeah. So I'm always like, fuck off with your nitpicks. Yeah. Like the voice acting's fine. <laughs> and like, even when I first experienced, the laughing scene <laughs> is not horrible. Like everyone's like, I always just viewed it as like he was meaning to laugh like that. Yeah, it that's was, the point of that scene. Is yeah. that like? They're trying to force each other to laugh. And when you're forcing yourself to laugh, you don't genuinely laugh. Correct. That's why it's yeah. over-exaggerated, because that's what they're doing in that scene. Yeah, yeah. And then they giggle at the end of that. Like, and that they laugh actually is fine. Laugh. Yeah. Yeah, like the laughs at the end of the scene when they're actually made, into, made each other laugh genuinely. Yeah. They're fine. Yeah. Because guess what? They're voice actors. Yeah. Like, What's his name? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. No. No. It's a three name. Yeah, James, Ar- Arnold. James Taylor Arnold. James, yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's an incredible voice actor. Yeah, he's, he's, in, a, he's still in stuff today. Fantastic, like, yeah. He's Fry. Is he? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> you don't hear it? That's all I I, didn't, I haven't seen that much Futurama. All I ever hear when I play Final Fantasy X is Fry. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... But no, that's cool. I, I'm the, you're up to a point where, uh, for those of you who have played Final Fantasy X, he's up to Evray. He's about to battle Evray, the Temple of Bevel. Um, fun, 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 fun. What was a fun fight was the first fight with Seymour. Oh, God, yeah. Um, and I hated the auto potion dudes. Yes. They fucking suck. But figured out Shiva, one or two shots to them, and then... The, his summon, where he drags you into oblivion, I'm like, this is clever, I died, because... I had a friend over and they were like, just use a summon and then they'll take the damage. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, that's actually a really good idea. But then if it didn't die after that, so I could still do, oh, and nice, it rebuilt nice. my overdrive back up. Yeah. So I just formed so it again. what I found quickly, what I found out um, with Anima <coughs> that's right. in that particular battle, um, he's super weak to physical attacks. Is he? Yeah. Um, yeah, so just straight up physical attacks are pretty decent if you've got your party member's stats in the right place. Yeah. Um, and he's pretty slow. Yeah. So having Titus or Titus, however you want to pronounce him, <coughs> having him in the in the in the party, just wailing on him yeah. constantly. Um, he drops pretty quickly. Yeah. He's not difficult to get down. There is, of course, the, like, you have to balance it with when he's going to cast Oblivion yeah. and take you out. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that battle is amazing. Seymour is one of the best parts of that game. Yeah. Um, he's incredible. He's an incredible villain. Um, he has great menace about him, the way they stand the character, the way the voice acting is. He has really good menace. Um, but also his boss battles... Plural. Um, yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um, the main bad guy. Yeah. The main um, human, humanoid bad guy. <laughs> it, it, mm, mm, this game goes some places. Okay, cool. He goes some places. Cool, cool. I'm excited. Um, but his, he, his moments within the story are some of the most intense, not just from a narrative standpoint, but from an actual mechanical standpoint. Um, his boss battles tend to... They, they are... Um, really good in the sense of like they're those kind of um gaming tasks that force you to use everything that you have learned up until this point Ah, cool like it's not just about um oh i've got to overpower him it's about no i need to balance my stats my effects my statuses yeah um my different party members it's it's um his his boss battles are the ones where the mechanic of switching in and out characters in the fly becomes the most crucial thing on the planet. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, like it's it's really really fascinating going back and watching that because there are some later boss battles that aren't that intense. Yeah. Um, that are more important to the storyline, but are nowhere near as difficult. Yeah. As he is. Um. But yeah, there's some really cool, cool moments in that story, and like I said, it yeah. goes places. Like you're you're hitting the point where it starts to like ramp up, yeah. um, which is awesome. Yeah, I love that. So make sure you come back and tell me how that goes for yeah. you. Uh, I will. I'm just trying to think any other things. Uh, the other thing I like about the collection itself is that it has like everything in it. Like it's got the bonus movie after ten. It's got ten two. It's got oh. last mission. Cool. It's got the audio book basically. Awesome. awesome. Um, oh man, maybe I should get this version. Yeah, well, it's, they've had all that since the PS3 version. Yeah. yeah. 
But I like it portable. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, if you want it like a... I'm, I, I think I agree with Alex from the Giant Beast cast, where I say I think there should be a moratorium on the phrase, it's really good on Switch. Because everything's really good on Switch. Yeah, like, like, turns out the Switch is a great system. The only thing that I think... The only things I think don't run well on Switch are like the intense games, like Doom, uh, not Bethesda, um, Wolfenstein, like actual... Like they run well, but like that's not the way you should be experiencing those games. Yeah, Even Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, like, I don't think anyone's claiming that you should... Ex- like these are the best experiences yeah. is on Switch. I think everyone has just finally... I think everyone has agreed at this point that there aren't any games that run badly to the point where you're like, oh, I would never play that on Switch. It's yeah. like, no, like... If if you're in a pinch and you have to play a version of a game on any on, on a system and you have to take it with you, the Switch is perfectly valid. Yeah. Like you can play Mortal Kombat 11. Apparently that's surprisingly good. Yeah. The frame rate's locked because it has to be. But like, if you want a portable version of Mortal Kombat 11 to play on a plane or on a bus trip, yeah. yes, absolutely. Like it yeah. works fine. You don't need to set up a friggin' laptop and play it on PC. Yeah. Like no. Or we'll play um, the mobile version, which is what but it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's just. Yeah, like at this point, like if someone says we're bringing X to Switch, then I am going to assume that X will run fine and it'll be yeah. good. Um, the only thing that, like specifically for Final Fantasy, there's like all different port port differences because mm-hmm. there's never been any consistency with Square ports in their lives. Mm-hmm. So you got to like do your own research on that. And I just watch like one for 10, 10 collection nine and seven, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm not playing. Like, always the best version is PC with mods. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so no, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Like there's yeah. later games, it doesn't really matter what version you're playing because at the end of the day, the the localization is what the the key issue is. Yeah. There. And at this point, the later version you get, the better the localization is going yeah. to be. Yeah. Um, playing this just makes me excited for seven. Ah, uh, not seven. Twelve. Yes. And yes. I'm like, okay, cool. That's out in a couple of days, isn't it? Uh, next week, next release Tuesday, I think. Jeez. Uh, I won't be buying that one immediately because I've still got <coughs> 10 and 10 through to go mm-hmm. through. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that kind of sucks is that they're full priced. Like they are $80 each, which is mm. good for 10, 10, 2 because it's $40 games. each and yeah. it comes with some bonuses. Like you can justify that a little bit of a like yeah. $70 for... Um, 12 yeah. especially when you can get it on PS4 for 24 yeah. but I want that portable experience yeah yeah it's a little bit rough yeah um, Zodiac yeah and yeah but it's Nintendo and they never drop their pricing <laughs> yeah but the thing is it's a third party Nintendo game yeah. so like it will drop in price yeah it's not like a Mario or something where it's gonna always be that price yeah. eventually you will see copies of that game well and that, that depends on how, how good Square Enix has done their thing again because one of the problems with 10 and 10 too is that they're actually really difficult to find mm. like the and print all that many of them exactly yeah. yeah and that's the weird thing about Square Enix is there's a, there's a hole when it comes to their ports is their ports are not great and then when they are good they don't print that many of them so you're fucked um, it's not too bad with all the digital no now that you've got digital it's not too yeah. bad but like I remember when the PS3 version of 10 and 10 2 came out it was fucking impossible to find yeah um, unless you pre-ordered it and yeah. then I did I had that one but then like oh, I can't remember it wasn't very long after that the PS4 version I came think it was out. about a year like, yeah exactly I was like why the fuck did I get my PS3 one I was like yeah. well guess guess what dumb sucker you're gonna, pay it. You're gonna buy it again um, which I did and I poured my saves over yeah. and then I'm looking at the Switch version going oh the original version <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. Anyway. The thing I do hope is that now that Square is running out of things to port, like of the main games, besides 8, um, I kind of want them to put Type-0 HD on there because I've never got to play it and I know it's... It's good. It's super portable on... Yes. Like, that's the point of it. For it's the a PSP. PSP game. Yeah. yeah. And, like, playing that kind of style on the PS4, I always like... Uh, and the only reason I wanted to play it, buy it originally was because I uh, never got it because it was stuck in Japan mm. and the 15 demo yeah but by the time I got to around to buying it all the 15 demo copies were already sold I so. play I, I bought that yeah I played Type 0 I really enjoy Type 0 yeah um, I think it's fascinating and fun um, and then I played the demo of 15 and that demo version <laughs> might have been better than the full game maybe I know there's like pros and cons of like the yeah. of that the middle demo and the final demo yeah. <laughs> like in the final game rather. I think the further I get away from Final Fantasy 15, the more I hate that game. The further I get it from the less I think about it, so I'm like, oh yeah, platinum that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all make mistakes. 
you're the fun part. I'm like, that game played like is fun to play. See, that, that, I think that's where I differ. I, was like, I don't know if it was fun to play. Mm. I know I sunk 70 hours into it, but I don't know if it was fun <laughs> to play. Yeah. And that's the thing is that the longer I'm away from it, the more I'm like, God damn it. Like, do I want those back? No, because then you'll be forever wondering, do I like Final Fantasy 15? No, I'm still going to be forever <laughs> wondering, do I like Final Fantasy 15? Because I just don't know the answer to that question. Well, the, 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 the real test will be one day I'm going to pick up the Royal Edition that has all the bonus, like all the extra content that I never touched. Like yeah. I've never played any of those episode yeah. prompto or whatever. Yeah. And see if that makes any difference. I suspect no, but... There is a bunch of like in-game stuff that they've added. Like I'm pretty sure you can play as any of the four characters now. I think there's like they've actually added a bunch of stuff into the game, which who, who'd have thought? An extra year of development is what I'm they needed to flesh out that game. I'm real sick of this whole like release a game and then two years later, oh no, this is the game we intended to release. Then why didn't you just release that game? Because that game needed to come oh, out. Oh, why that game? No, that game didn't come out. That game needed to be killed like eight years ago. Yeah. Eight years before its release, they should have just killed it. Yeah. Anyway, what else is, is that? All and you speaking mean? of Switch ports, Cuphead. Cuphead. Cuphead's really, really good on Switch. It's really hard. I'm up to the second aisle, island, whatever they're called, mm-hmm. um, and I haven't touched it since. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, ah, uh, because uh, then I've got yeah a bunch of other game playing. But like, no, yeah. it runs well. It looks great. Mm-hmm. Like, I besides the 30s art style, which I love, mm-hmm. it just it runs well. Um, it's great to play it with a PlayStation controller because oh, um, yeah. of my life hacks. Yes. Um, but also, it's like. It's the other thing of like when you're playing it in handheld mode, the D pad sucks, but, yeah. but because of closer to your face, you have that quicker reaction time. Yeah. Not, and there's v- v- even less input lag, so you've yeah. got precision. Yeah. Um, so there's that trade off. I'm like, right. do I want to buy the D, like the good D pad Joy Con? I'm like, I can't justify 70 bucks no, on that. No, 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 no. Um, it's not worth it. And then Overcooked. I had a friend come over and they had Overcooked and we played that. That's fun yeah, and chaotic. You, you know what's also really good on Switch? What's that? Overcooked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Overcooked's just, great. Just a switch, Switch-O-Matic. Switch, yeah. switch, Switch-O-Rama. I watched a Let's Play. Oh, and they played on PS4 and they didn't have a second controller because they just forgot to bring it in. Um, so they used one controller uh, between yes, the yes, two. Yes. I'm like, oh, that looks horrible yeah. and awful and uh, yeah. and they were not good at it. No, that's bad. Um, you know, it worked well in, in um, single Joy-Con mode. It, oh, cool. Yeah, no. That's good. good. Fun. What have you been up to? Um, I haven't played a lot of different games. I've gotten to the end of my Pokemon Ultra Sun playthrough. Mm-hmm. I haven't finished it yet because I keep forgetting how fucking hard that final... So there's a final encounter... Not a final encounter. There's a boss Yeah. in that game, which is a thing they haven't done in a while. Um, like a team leader boss? No, no, no. Like a, a legendary Pokemon boss. Um, where it's just this straight up overpowered legendary Pokemon that you can't catch. You have to beat it um, to advance the story. Um, Interesting. So in previous games, what they've done is they've you you have to catch it to advance the story. But this time around, they're like, no, you just have to beat it. Just get it down to zero. Um, so I haven't been paying attention to the new games. Like you could beat the old Pokemon, mm-hmm. but then you wouldn't be able to catch them later. Correct. Did that then become down to just catch them? Yes, yes. So the most recent Pokemon games, like, um, so since Black... Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe even since Diamond and Pearl. Um, I think it might be Black, actually. I think it's Black. Yeah. What they did is they integrated the legendary, the box art legendary Pokemon into the story. Yeah. And so in order to finish the game, you would have to catch that legendary Pokemon. Yeah. Well, you could do that in Ruby and Sapphire as well, but... Yes, no, but this oh, is... They the, integrated them into the story. Yes, so they, inter- they integrated them into the story in such a way that you have to catch the box art legendary for the story to progress. Oh, I see. So they literally... So in black and white, the whole thing is that you are facing off against this other character named N. He has one legendary dragon. You have to have the other. Yeah. Because that's the prophecy they're trying to fulfill. Yeah. So you have to catch it. So if you fail to catch it in the battle where you are that, um, where you're doing that, it just boots you back and starts it again and goes, go on, try and go and catch the thing. And so you've got to go back and catch the thing. 
Interesting. What that then led to was that when you got to Generation 6, they dropped the catch rate on legendary Pokemon. So, like, it's way easier to catch them. Also, they introduced a quick ball. So, you just throw a ball at the start of the battle and the legendary Pokemon's caught. No issues whatsoever. But quick ball was in Gen 4, and I did try to do that and it never worked. No, it works but... almost every single time. Fuck oh, me. <laughs> like, it kind of takes the fun out of it. Like, yes. Is that just for the story legendaries, or is that go for all of them for most of them to a certain degree uh, you can it, look, to a certain no. degree yeah I know what you mean yeah, yeah like like the, the quick ball works more often now the story legendary is 100% it's like the easy the quickest way to get this done is either my two strategies on that part of the on that part of the the storylines is usually throw a quick ball in the first turn and if that doesn't work then just I don't know hypnosis it or just stall it for like 20 turns and then throw a timer ball yeah it. Like there's there's no no yeah. reason to, but they made the quick ball more effective, um, so it does work on other legendaries that you have to catch occasionally, but it's a pretty rare instance. Yeah. Like it's not it's not like every single time. Yeah. But it does mean that there's a way of people who maybe aren't so good at the battling side of things to catch those Pokemon. Yeah. Because they're required. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So Ultrasun boss. Yes. So like those those particular ones that are. Uh, um, story centric you have to catch them and it's the same in sun as well sun and yep. moon the original sun and moon yep. the box art legendary you have to catch it's central to the story yep. um, with this one they went a little bit different which I liked they make the box art legendary central to the story and you do have to battle it but the battle that is part of the central story you don't have to catch it in fact you can't catch it it just will not work they have taken the catching out of that battle all you have to do is weaken it to stop it that's that's all the part of that story is, and it's great because it means yeah. that like it's, it feels like a legendary battle. It's just yeah. this fucking big ass dragon monster, and not only did they remove the ability to catch it at that point in the story, they also made it incredibly difficult. It is a really unique type combination of psychic and dragon, mm-hmm. so it's OP on like two different levels. Yeah. Um, it is incredibly fast, it is incredibly powerful, and it has a really good coverage spread of moves. Yeah. Um, sure. To the point where you're like, oh, yeah, no, 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 like, so it's like in Dragon. Okay, I'll throw an Ice type out there. No, it has Power Gym, Rock type move. So it just annihilates any oh. of your Ice types. And you're like, okay, all right, so then what if I throw in. Um, I'm trying to think about what other options I have. Oh, Dark um, type? Yeah, Dark type. Dark type. Like, um,. Um, like my Incineroar, which is my starter type, because it's a fire and dark. Like, oh, that's great. It'll be immune to that. Um, or, it, you know, it'll, it'll be able to take out the, the psychic portion of it. But it has Dragon Pulse. And it doesn't matter what type you are, Dragon is pretty much effective against everyone, and its special attack is so high Fuck. that it legitimately KOs my level 60 Incineroar in one shot. What level is it? 60. Okay. So it, it's on... It's, I'm on... Like, this time around, I'm on par. Last time around, I was a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's level 60 and it's just, it's a brute. It's incredible. Um, and the thing I love about it is that it does make you think. Yeah. It makes you absolutely think about what you can do. There are very few Pokemon that are faster than it and it's handy to have them on the, on the team. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got other coverage moves as well. Like it's, it's main move, prismatic laser, which is a psychic type move, which means it can disable a lot of like pretty much anything else, you know? So like your poison types and stuff yep. like that because a lot of people are like oh just poison it and stall it out like no if your poison type's dead in one shot you got no hope yeah um, so yeah it's coverage is incredible um, and it just it's a really difficult battle and it's really really cool I'm hoping they get this kind of difficulty back into the next game as well um, so I haven't finished that one off yet um, the only other thing I've been playing was I went and I picked myself up um, a copy of the Handsome Collection ah Borderlands yes um, how is that well, it's been a while since I played it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I looked at Borderlands 3, the announcement, which was a couple of weeks ago. and um, Slash of another one tomorrow. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, like actually showing off actual gameplay, I oh, think. Oh, that'll be fun. That'll be good. Yeah. I'm hoping that there's something different. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> the thing with that trailer was that I think they did a good job of walking the line. Um, I was afraid, given Borderlands' history of what their writing style is, that they would go too meme yeah, um, and too internet humory. But I think they pulled it back just enough. Yeah. 
But I mean, just like they were walking the line in certain parts of that trailer. I was like, fuck off. I don't yeah. want it. Shut up. Yeah. Um, but I'm interested because I realize that there is something, I guess, I guess the word is pure about the Borderlands experience. Yeah. Cause I, n- I never played pre-sequel I and mean, here that's the worst of the three. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to play it. I was tempted to maybe pick up a copy of Borderlands 1 because that's backwards compatible now and they've got like the remastered version but I wasn't I wasn't willing to do like a digital download for that or anything like that in case I was just like eh this sucks and yeah. wanted to get rid of it um, so I just bought a physical copy of the Handsome Collection because I know what I'm in for Yeah. and I've I played all the way up until the end of Borderlands and didn't finish it. Yep. I didn't actually finish the final boss. Uh, I never played any of the DLC. I have started the Borderlands 2 campaign half a dozen times, maybe? Um, because I always fell into the same trap, which was me and three other friends would be like, oh, we'll play it together. We'll all play. We'll all pick one of the characters. We'll all play it together. And yeah. So, okay, we all get together. We'd look, hook up our Xboxes. We'd start playing it. We'd get, like, pretty far into it. Yeah. Like, say, eight to ten hours, which, and then just stop playing yeah. it. So I've played the first eight to ten hours a lot. Um, that being said, the thing I like about Borderlands is it's it's pure. It is just go in there, shoot this shit, collect that shit. And that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. And it's really simple. And I don't feel like I'm balancing every. Like I feel like modern loot shooters. I'm like balancing everything. I'm like, oh, get this number, this number. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Which oh, I think there is a place for that, but you don't want every game to be that like it is now. Yeah, yeah. And, like, there is a, there is some of that. Like, I have been looking at my inventory and going, oh, is that one, this one, that one, this yeah. one, uh, this one. Yeah. But I feel like, I don't know, I don't know what it is about the Borderlands interface. It just feels, like, stripped back in such a way that's, like, simple. Yeah. And so, you know, and there's simple things like that, you know, hold X to loot all kind yeah. of thing. You know, everything that you can carry, you'll just pick up. Um, that's awesome. Um, I do like the way it feels. It still felt good to shoot. It still yeah. felt good to run around. Um, I'm still super early because I haven't even unlocked like like the character's first ability yet. It's oh, just, wow. It's just guns and yeah. stuff like that. I haven't actually had a chance. Um, but I feel like it's the kind of game that I might just, you know, be able to play for a while. I feel like it's going to be what's going to help me possibly try and get through Days Gone when I decide to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no. Um, I it, it's making me it, uh, like the the announcement made me fascinated for the idea of a Borderlands three. I want there to be a Borderlands three. I'm looking forward to a Borderlands three, um, and so I just want to I wanted to kind of immerse myself back in there because like well, the other thing is is that Borderlands has this weirdly fascinating storyline yeah. and, and arc that I know nothing about. Yeah. Listen, I played like 50 hours of Borderlands 1 and I can tell you fuck all about that story. So maybe I figure that out before 3 but I feel like yeah, Borderlands 3 is one of those games that I'm actually really looking forward to towards the end of the year. Like the end of the year shaping up quite nicely now with Borderlands 3 Pokemon and Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. Like that's actually like a really good spread of games. Yeah. And I'm pretty impressed. And they're different games. Like. Yes, yeah, all completely different games. Like, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to what hopefully Borderlands 3 is an offline loot shooter. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. you can play online. But, yeah. like, I, like, just the, just yeah. the idea of, like, this is going to be a game that I can play by myself with no interference and no problems and not worry about a server. Yeah. And still have a billion guns. Like, that's awesome. Um, and I do like the fact that, like, no two people playing the games are ever the same because the, the guns are always procedurally generated yeah. so they've got the random stats along with the random perks and like that means that you can you can find fun and crazy things in that world um, which I'm really looking forward to I also found it fascinating that they've done an update to Borderlands 2 so when you put it in the disc in the drive and you boot it up the first thing that pops up is hey want to pre-order Borderlands 3? I have heard that yeah <laughs> I knew, I knew that was for the um, updated version of Borderlands 1, like the remaster that just came out. I didn't realize they did that for Handsome Collection as well. That, yes, yeah, that's yes the, they did it for Handsome Collection as well. Yep. Yep. I don't know if that's like admirable no, or super... No, no, no. It's not like 
it's admirable in like honor amongst thieves kind of way. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was going for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or if it's just proper dirty, but it's a game like <laughs> it's kind of like not bad like to see like if you like this game buy another game like yeah. that's probably the one thing about the PlayStation Top Shop that it's like does lack is that like doesn't yeah. have like no algorithm to fuck which is nice but. Oh, I feel like games like, like I can these. get, I can get them trying to stick in that, but like I've seen other games do it in the past, where like they've added a menu option or something in there that's like, hey, check out Borderlands Three because yeah. we've announced it or whatever. But the fact that like <coughs> it was just a menu screen and it had like pre-order Borderlands Three and it had the three versions of Borderlands oh, Three yeah. you could buy. Yeah, and go straight to the shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of it, <laughs> it was just that on there, and and then at the top corner was like press B to skip. I was like, you fuckers. <laughs> You pieces of shit. Um, but no, I'll, I'll keep trucking along with Borderlands and, and maybe Days Gone, maybe next week, um, and see what else we can come up with. But yeah, that's been me. Okay, cool. Yeah. cool. Let's get into the news. Let's dive into the news. God damn it. I know what that was. Oh, fucker. <laughs> All right. What's the first story you got here? The Final Fantasy VII, a symphonic reunion official concert dated for June the 9th slash 10th. Time zones. Right. We are the 10th. We are the future. <laughs> Go back. Go back. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the only reason I included this was because <coughs> last year during the Kingdom Hearts World Tour, the Kingdom Hearts 3 World Tour, when we saw the, the trailer for that. Yeah. And because really it's so close to E3 yeah. and Namor is running the ship. It's right, probably right. likely we'll get to see something out of it. The most, least. yeah, okay. Possibility of a Final Fantasy. So why? I don't. Why? I just. Okay, because this. They this then, need to come out. But. This then ties in with the thing of like Square Enix is taking Sony's press conference slot. So yeah. that's the Monday night. Monday night our time. I Monday think. no Monday I, night their time. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's like yeah Tuesday ten o'clock our time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like Sony because it's like a, during a normal time of the day. Yes. It's not. Yeah in the middle of the night yeah no so it's, it's yeah Microsoft will be taking early Sunday yeah um, Bethesda will be then after them and then uh, it will be Ubisoft and then Square Enix and then the Nintendo Direct yeah. which they, we assume they'll have one yeah um, in that order um, which you know Square Enix okay so th- th- that's a couple things there yeah last year fucking god awful what a train r- at least we got the quiet man <laughs> At least we got the quiet man. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! I'm calling it now. I re- I wrote it down here. Quiet man two. The definite. Quiet man two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I'm like. Uh, quiet man two. Quiet man DLC. Like, what do we get? <laughs> quiet man two. Electric boogaloo. Yeah. Yeah. Like. I I just okay. So okay. <laughs> God, I gotta somehow get through this without just laughing at the quiet man the whole time. They, they've taken Sony's press conference, which is which, to me, says that they've got something to show. It has to. Why would you take the biggest slot available if you're just going to press play on another 45 minute video? And like, I'm happy for them to press 45 minute video because Nintendo does it well. Yes. If it's something worth watching. But no, they've taken the press conference slot. So it means they've taken the stage, which means I'm going to see Yoko Taro on that stage. Potentially. I hope. I want to see his moon face. <laughs> he was a YouTuber there for a bit. Did you not watch his YouTube career? Yes, I did. <laughs> I didn't actually watch the video. I saw like the headlines of the news like, and then he became an idol for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. That man is amazing. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna see him and he's gonna be so weird and ah. Oh. And the thing that I love about it is they're taking that press conference thing, which means like that's that's the slot that gets like put on main television and gets syndicated out to people who don't know about video games. Yeah, you're right. He's gonna see Yokotaro with his friggin' moon mask <laughs> on. Oh god, yes. Anyway. Is it an actual press conference? Because, yes. Okay, cool. That, that, that is the thing, is that they've taken the press conference slot. So I don't know... Okay. From what I gather, they have taken yeah. everything that Sony had there, which is like the stage, the setup, the press conference itself. Yeah. So that time slot yeah. is theirs. Now, I'm not... So, there's no way they're going to have the two and a half, three hour conferences no, no. that Sony would have because Sony... Is the first published... Pub- 
that <laughs> it is yes. they have other content and partners whereas Square is Square exactly yeah. and not only that but they're also a hardware manufacturer they've got all these other things they can yeah. do they can fill like two and a half hours with a press conference um, Square I'm thinking hour hour at most hour and a half tops if it's badly paced yeah. yes <laughs> which it will which be which it will be <laughs> Because I remember the first time I watched an E... Well, the first time I actually dived in and was like, I want to watch it, all these E3 press conferences. Yeah. It was one of the years that Square Enix had one. Because they kind of come in and out. Yeah, they need to, um, yeah. And it was the it was the year that they... Now, it was the year that they had... Oh, I can't remember what they actually... They announced the Tokyo RPG Factory. Okay. That was the year they announced that that yeah. thing was going to be a, a thing, along with the game I Am Setsuna. It was the announcement of Nier Automata. Which made everyone go, huh? A sequel to, to Nier? Nier? Yeah. All right, sure. Um, it was the announcement of t- Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise, okay. Rise of the Tomb Raider. They announced the Hitman. Yeah, the Hitman. The Hitman. Um, the Hitman. And it was it was the, it was the year where they just made a fuck ton of. That was actually I do remember that one. Was that twenty fifth? That must have been twenty fifteen. It, it was twenty fifteen or twenty fourteen. I can't remember 14, exactly. Fourteen because then it would have been a year later. Yeah. When Rise came out. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was fourteen. Yeah. Um, and it was just it, it, they were just they had a lot of they had a lot of shit to say. Yeah. Um, and I remember that one went on forever, <laughs> and not because it was badly paced. But because what they wanted, what they were doing, and I actually really liked what they were doing, which was they wanted a a human being from whatever department was making the announcement to be on stage. Yeah. And what that led to was a lot of people who don't speak English. Yeah, yeah, and that's so what, right. What yeah. We ended, what we ended up happening was not in a not in a really bad way, but you end up with a that that thing where you'd have a sentence of dialogue from the person speaking and then a translation happening as well and it would just you know bounce back between yeah. that and it just meant that what would normally get done in 3 or 4 minutes took 5 or 10 yeah. because you had to wait for the translation <coughs> yeah and so that made this you know like honestly announcement after announcement after announcement I was like this is cool this is cool I'm cool with this yeah. all right yeah okay um that that's right that was was it that year no, no, no. They still hadn't announced 15's release date at that point. Release date, no. That was its own no. conference that they no, did there. No, no. Yes, you're right. Um, they, I can't remember. They had another big thing that I can't remember. 14. Kingdom Hearts 3 was the year before. Mm-hmm. Maybe a... Definitely a 14 expansion. Um, that might have been it. That might have been the thing they finished with. Like the first, like Heaven's Ward or something. I think so, maybe. That checks the out. The first big one after yeah. the Realm Reborn. That might have been it. Squares, squares, squares. Because it wasn't. It was the year. I remember. It, it wasn't the year where Final Fantasy VII remake was announced. Because that yeah. year they didn't have their own press. Conference. Yeah, that was at Sony, and that yeah. was twenty fifteen for yeah. sure. So yeah, it must have been twenty fourteen that I remember. Um, but yeah, it was like a lot of shit. Like it was a lot of stuff that, in hindsight, was a lot of great games. Yeah. Um, what was that the first time Deus Ex was announced? Probably. Uh, yeah, Mankind Divided. That yeah. sounds right. Yeah, that might have been that one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they they, made, they they had a lot of shit to say. <coughs> Which is why I was excited for last year's one, because, like, oh, last time they did this, they had stuff to say. I'm like, okay, cool, they're going to be, like, talking about stuff, yeah. like, the next project from all their studios, and then they pulled what they did last year. I'm like, yeah. what, what is this square? What is this year? Is I this 2014? Like, is this 2018? Yeah, what is and this? I feel like I said this last year when it came out of Square's... Like out of Square's E3 press conference, it definitely felt like they were in a holding pattern. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, like, like this is a this is a weird thing of like, are they just getting their? And I think, I think this kind of solidifies that they were just getting their foot back in the door. Yeah, because they have to, you know, because like E3 is weird with yeah, like yeah. how you do that stuff. And I know like your prediction was the reason they did that was so that they could like keep the time slot that they wanted. Yeah, but then that's gone and changed. Maybe that was a plan because no one plans on Sony moving out. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they 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 put it in there so that at least next year they could get their time slot back. Um, but Sony then goes, well, we're gonna bail out, and so Square Enix goes. Well, can we take can it, we please? Have that one, please. And the ESA is not going to say no because they're one of their, their biggest players just dropped out. Yeah. So they need something to fill the time slot. Yeah. Um, and also, like, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if they probably would have given Square the same time slot 
But I get the feeling, again, I get the feeling that there's something here to announce. I think at the very least it's Avengers. Coming off of Endgame, coming off of Spider-Man, um, even Iron Man to a degree, like Marvel games yeah, wants to keep their momentum the, going. Yeah. And if Square, that, that, that project has been in development for two years. We need, we don't need, but it'd be good if they just showed a concept trailer or the heroes that are going to be in it or... Yeah. Even what the gameplay is like, just a, even like the God of War 2016 E3 demo, like yeah. something like if there was something like that, yeah, like just to like give us a feel of what this is, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, I just feel like I feel like they've got they have to have something bubbling and ready to go. Square themselves. Yeah, like like I said, like they, and they had that that they had that Babylon game that they teased last year. Yeah, Babylon um, Four, which that's. I always get that in the last mission, a uh, last frontier game confused. The one with the Metal Gear designer, the one with um, it came out it was bad. Uh, that next gener- generation zero, no, um, it came out earlier this year. It's not Babylon Fall, which is what I can get confused. Lot, lot. It's a spin-off as well. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know the one you're talking about. Um, yeah, that which looked cool, and then it came out, and like this is like bad. It's bad. Yeah, but um, like they, yeah, but the thing is, the Babylon game is a platinum game. It is which makes, yeah. yeah, which makes me go, okay, okay, yeah. all right, like, okay, let's let's see what that is. Yeah. Um, you've got a list of things here, like the Final Fantasy VII remake. Again, I just unless you give me a fucking release date, that thing stays in the dirt. Yeah. Like, keep it buried. It, yeah. Until you give me a release date, because anything they say about that other than a release date is just stoking the fire. Um, and I just don't care until yeah. you give me a release date. Which, um, yeah. and even then, I've I actually might have reached the point where I just don't want to play that anymore. I'm, like I'm, I'm at the point now where I've had so many like I've got nine on my Switch, I've got ten, yeah. ten to my PS4, and twelve. And if I want to play a Final Fantasy game, I can play a Final Fantasy yeah. game. It's not going to be that difficult. Yeah. I don't need this gussied up version of it. Yeah. So I'm more leaning towards like if you're gonna make a Final Fantasy announcement, make it sixteen. Sixteen. Like I tell me what that is. This is the longest time we've been without knowing about the next numbered Final Fantasy game. Yeah. And Square just did a port dump. Everything has everything now. Like, yeah. every console has everything. Yeah. There's, like, one or two games really left, like, Type-0, like well, I how said. How long has it been since um, since 15 was launched? Long- that was 15? 2016. 16. So it's been three years. Three, like, it, that was November. This is, like... They could do pump out a Final Fantasy in three years, couldn't they? If they're using the same engines, they don't have to worry about building that again. It depends on the leadership. It depends on, like, everything. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it makes sense for it to be, but like, yeah. Square is not a traditional company. They're fucking no, weird. Yeah, they are. They have no focus. Which again, th- it doesn't mean that the the idea of them announcing a Final Fantasy 16 and it releasing later this year is not out of the realm of possibility. Because of how weird Square is, that is distinctly possible. It is absolutely 100 percent within the realm of possibility that they just go, yeah, Final Fantasy 16. We work. We started working on it as soon as we finished 15, and it's out uh, November 26th. What team would have been doing it though? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's Square. It could have just pulled the team out of their ass. Like they could have done whatever they wanted. Yeah, I still think. The I think we're still ways off a ways. Yeah, I think 16, 16 will come out of um, uh, what's his chop? The guy made, or made, yeah, made Realm Reborn. Yes. I think like that project is now starting, and that'll be 16. I mean, or it could be 17 for all the fuck we know. Exactly, that's the thing. Like, and, <sighs> like, there's my my hope is that he's actually going to work on a new IP. Um, oh, that happened to Barter and then he left. <laughs> like, they probably want to keep this guy around. Yeah, but the thing is, like. Again, as I said before, he seems to have this weird knack yeah, of being right. able to like navigate those two waters, so hopefully he'll be fine. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC is not big enough to make a press conference. I don't care no, who you are. Like, this will be in the conference. Like, it'll make it up. Like, sure. I'm not saying like this is the reason it exists. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, um, like, what I'm saying is, with the Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Avengers, I still think... There's something else. It's not big enough. It's not big enough to... The Sony slot. But that could yeah. be the thing. We could be putting too much, way, way too much expectation on it. Square Edge has decided to go on this time slot because they're weird. Yeah, again, because they're weird. Like, there's nothing we yeah. can... You can't... You can't like, if they put Bethesda taking thing, like, oh, shit. Yeah. Starf... Not Starfleet. Starfield. Um, God, Bethesda's press conference. I'm yeah, so that's excited gonna... for Bethesda's press conference. <laughs> God, I can't wait. 
It sucks that you no. won't get an EA one oh, <laughs> for the same reason. I know, reasons. I know, because EA's smarter than Bethesda, <laughs> so they were like, nah, we're going to dodge that bullet, but Bethesda's like, nah, let's do it. And they're going to have Pete Hines on stage, and he's going to try and worm his way out of the Fallout 76 stuff, and it's going to be so fucking good. <laughs> 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 Can't wait. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, you just treating your reactions to... So um, <laughs> To the it's the gonna be it's gonna be like completely like lost up. But I just yeah. I, I need to know what because he's gonna because if he if he says whatever whatever he says what is what do you say yeah. what do you say exactly. and then if he doesn't say anything that's worse yeah <laughs> my god so good yeah damn it EA ah <laughs> oh, damn it Andrew Wilson you coward <coughs> oh, god that would have been so good because they had oh man Anthem God Anthem but. I honestly don't know what else like they could do. Like I know the new Tokyo RPG game is coming out. The yeah, what was that called? I've been seeing the title, but it's super generic and like yeah, yeah. I remember thinking, like, uh, um, I, I, I just know the Tokyo RPG Factory hasn't been producing great games. They're good. They're good games. I've heard I Am Setsuna is really, really good. It is. It is really good. But I just don't know if it's. I know Lost Fear was eh for, for most people. Yeah, Lost Fear was eh, and their last one wasn't great either. Was, they I have thought a, this was their third game that they're doing. Third? Now. Okay. I thought, I thought that was another game. one. I don't know. Um, but they just haven't been. Yeah, they've been good games. They're just yeah. not great. Like, they're not. Yeah, like, I feel like the. <sighs> For me, I've always looked at Tokyo RPG Factory as kind of like, well, the next Final Fantasy gets spun out of these guys. They come up with something, and then... Idea gets stolen. Yeah, and then things... Maybe. Yeah. But they just don't seem to be... I don't know. They, they are just making, like, traditional RPGs. Yeah. Which is what It's people, good. Yeah. It's a good market to be in, because, like, you know, if, you, if you're the company that's churning one of those out every couple of years, great. Yeah. But like I said, the thing with, the thing with E3 is that you are often... This is the exciting thing about Square Enix, though, is that most of the other developers that are at um, E3. E3 are generally westernized developers, yeah. to, to an extent. Like, it would have been great if like Konami wasn't a bad company and was still there. Like, yes. still, Capcom press conference would be fun. Yes, like, Capcom a, would be great. Like, um, Especially lately, because they've been yeah. knocking... Everything not fighting games, they've been knocking it out of the park. Remember the last fight? Like, Street Fighter V came out before the Capcom didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was kind of, it was weirdly kind of the beginning of it. Like Street Fighter yeah. Five came out, and it was not good. Yeah, it was a good fighting game, just bad every way, every yeah, other every way imaginable. Else, yeah. um, and, and then most- and the most recent, like, was it Capcom versus Capcom, Capcom oh, versus Marvel Ma- Infinite? Yeah. It was not great. No, um, I played so, the demo for that, and it was yeah, awful. I'm like, yeah. why did you put this out? You may deter the yeah, game completely. Yeah, so weird, weirdly enough, Capcom's non-fighting game arm has been the the strongest thing yeah. recently. So yeah, um, where was I going with that? Uh, oh yes, they're mostly Western developers, and so a lot of the time. And Sony's like, not—they don't bring their Japanese stuff here. They keep not that really. In, uh, like TGS, yeah, yeah. and to, uh, Japan doesn't make much stuff anymore. For no, Sony. no, they, they they stick to the hardware side mostly now. Yeah. I think. Um, but they, um, what that means is that a lot of the time, our Western news places get a lot of leaks yeah we'll get a lot of stuff we're like oh we think this will be here this will be here this will be here then you watch the press conference and lo and behold that that and that yeah no i see where you're going yep square enix doesn't really like they're pretty good at like shutting everything down and like keeping everything close to the jacket yeah and because it's japan and canada like those don't like they don't really get to like the la thing until like the day exactly like yeah yeah so like if there are surprises to be had at Square Enix, I don't think we're going to know about them until it happens. We might, maybe someone accidentally stumbles into the press conference, you know, the day yeah. before, like during a rehearsal, yeah. and gets a screenshot of something. Yeah, that's like, usually... Or the only yeah. other thing I can see happening is um, Avengers being leaked, because that is cross-company and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that's the only thing... But I even can... then, like, what was it... <laughs> Spider-Man was a surprise. Uh, no, Spider-Man wasn't a surprise because we all no. thought Sucker Punch was meeting. Yes, making the surprise it. was who was developing yeah, it. Because we, we were like, wait a second, what? That's not Sucker Punch. Yes. What's <laughs> Sucker Punch doing? <laughs> making Assassin's Creed Ninjas. Uh, yes. Samurai. Yeah. Um, but the, um, the Square Enix thing is just like, they could keep it pretty close to the vest mm-hmm. and be able to, to, to create a pretty... Pretty special press conference if they do something big. Yeah. Um, which I, I just I hope they do. Yeah. Because I just at the end of the day, like my prediction is this 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 will probably be lackluster at best, and we'll be like yeah. eh, whatever. Yeah. Like 
I think what I actually think is going to happen is we'll get Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC announcement. Mm-hmm. We'll get complete edition Final Fantasy 15 because they added the episode Arden after Royal oh, Edition. I so you can get the final complete thing and then we're actually moving on. I hate you. It's, I'm right. <laughs> There's one DLC, like you can't have Royal Edition and then one other DLC for the non-complete yeah, edition. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and then... That's it. Like maybe more stuff from Babylon Falls. Maybe more stuff from like are there other projects. Are the PC port of Octopath. Sure. PC port or what's it? The mobile port. That's what I'm thinking of. That's a yeah. weird, different thing. Um, would be that like just their normal like because like, what I use what I would say is like the next ASX gets teased, the next Tomb Raider gets teased, but no. No. maybe or maybe. Iados has something else going on. Like, I know they just finished... Maybe. ...a uh, thing, but... Maybe? I don't know. There's a whole team that's no longer working on... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Also, I wonder, like, whether they devote any of this time to their not westernized stuff. So maybe we get a Dragon Quest. Oh, Dragon Quest, which will be there, yeah. 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 Um, um, Dragon Quest Eleven specifically. Yeah. I'm also excited yeah. to play that on Switch. Yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe we get a Chrono Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> God, this Z3. I feel like this Z3 might be a bit disappointing. In general? Across yeah. Across the board. Yeah. I just don't see... Like, Microsoft hasn't got anything to... Like, there'll be surprises, a couple Microsoft of Microsoft's going hardware. They'll go hardware. Um, which is great, but also, like, it, it just... It's whenever the hardware's announced... Yeah, like, yeah. It's exactly what want to happen. The like year this... they announced the Xbox Scorpio, yeah. before they called it the X, and they were like, we're doing this next year. I was like, well, then what the fuck is the point of me buying anything this year? Yeah, like, they, kinda... they just also announced S at the start of this. And it's yeah, like... I was like, oh, just wet blanket the whole thing then. Yeah. Like, I don't care about whatever you're doing, because I'm just going to wait till next year. Yeah. Then they announced the X, and then they give you some more stuff, but, like, it just doesn't feel... It's bad timing. Yeah. Um, and then the... That's why I think... Oh, we'll get into that later. I don't know, I, Bethesda, like, again, I'm just there for the lols. Like, that's, that's yeah. what I'm there for, Bethesda. Um, Ubisoft, I'm here to see Watch Dogs 3. I'm here to see... I want to see Splinter I mean, Cell. Yes, like, like Ubisoft is one of the ones where it's like it's probably the most predictable, but... Skull and Bones will be there for the third year in a row. Oh, fuck it, Skull and Bones. <laughs> I think about the other day, because I was talking to, to my uh, friend that was over I about totally like... I totally forgot about Skull and Bones. Yeah, no, I was talking about like Assassin's Creed. Like, <laughs> he, he hadn't played 4, and I'm like, Assassin's Creed, great. And then, and then he's like, because we were talking about... I, eventually, I just got to Skull and Bones. <laughs> which I completely forgot about until I bought it up. It doesn't actually like, exist yet. I'm like... Oh yeah, that game. I, I'm excited. I'm like trepidations about it, but like, if it's more, you know if it's just also- Assassin's Creed Four ship stuff, I'm on board. Even if it is games of servicey and loot driven and shit, I don't care. Wait, as far as I can tell, it's Overwatch cross that. Like it's teams Overwatch. of five. Yeah, it's teams of five. It's a five on five arena battle. Yeah. I don't think I put the two together. No, you didn't. No, no. yeah, that's that's basically what it is. It's a five on five arena battle, except with ship combat. I thought it was like live service, like open world. You can do what you want. No, 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 no. no. They're team battles. I don't want that. Yeah, it wasn't live service. No, 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 no. Unless that's what they're moving to now because they kind of like ripped it from the face of the earth and they were like, no, 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 no. We're going to keep working on that. Ubisoft Singapore. They made they made the ship stuff in 4. I know, I know. <laughs> they made the ship stuff in 4. They didn't make 4. Yeah. This team has never made a game before. Like, they've You're just right, been yeah. a support. Um, <clears throat> yes. But you know what's also still a thing? Let me guess. I can't think of any other Ubisoft. Beyond anymore. Good and Evil 2. Fuck, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I knew there was something. That if I said, let me guess, like, there is something. It's not shit that I want. It's not like Mario Reverse Rabbids 2. No. It's not. No. It's Why not- would Ubisoft ever give you what you want? <laughs> like- hey. Yeah, there. They do stuff. <laughs> they're pretty good. Yeah, they're, they are. They're like, uh, they, are the, they are the least evil of the video game companies right now. Yeah, they're probably the most effective at being evil. Like, mm-hmm. game to service. They're winning that. Yeah. They have their, yeah. They even have single player get, like games of service sort but of. But the thing like, is, like, I feel like Ubisoft is the most is the is the company that's quickest to react to its fan base. Yeah, exactly. But they communicate like, with the fans. Like when Unity was a pile of trash that no one wanted to play, they were like, all right, we'll just not do that. Yeah. Whereas you know when EA sees a pile of trash that no one wants to play, they're like, double down, double down. We didn't make that mistake. What? Yeah, yeah. We're not right. here to take each other down. Single player games are dead. Fucking moron. Um, I, yeah. But yeah, like Beyond Good and Evil 2. That's a thing, apparently. Who is it Jake Gyllenhaal? What? There's an actor involved, remember? Is there? 
No, um... Not Elijah Wood. Not this Joseph time. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Because he got his company something something. Yeah. And it was really Are weird. Are we going to see that again? Is no, he going to show up? Really weird and shitty. No, we're just going to see them be like, yeah, welcome to the Space Monkey program. <laughs> we have been working hard all year with the Space Monkeys. <laughs> Here is some more concept art. Please don't buy us Vivendi. And then that'll be the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they can't anymore. There's a five-year buffer on them. Sorry. But you're right. Sorry, ten- still, Everything is still, please don't buy us from Wendy for the rest of it ever. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tencent. As well, yeah. Because <laughs> Tencent is currently, that's the one. But, like, they just, they, yeah. E3 is going to be weird this year. It's going to be so weird. I hope, I hope Nintendo does a good job. Yeah. I want to see some Pokemon. I want to see Animal Crossing. They've announced it is coming. We I was going to say, like, fat chance, but actually, no, that's actually a distinct possibility. Yeah, no, it's most likely. Most likely. Yeah. That is, like, they've already confirmed that a game exists. Like, if Pokemon is not the big game, they, you know, they focus mm. on one every year. If Pokemon's not it, then it's going to be Animal Crossing. It can't be anything else. Yeah. Unless they do, like, an F Zero. They're not. Don't. Oh, Rare. Not Rare. Retro. Who knows? They, they made a game. Who the knows what the fuck happened to it? <laughs> It's buried in a dumpster with E.T. or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, E3 All right, well, good. we will get... Like, E3 is starting to ramp up now because we are in late April and E3 is early June. Like, we're like six... We're at the weeks. end of yeah, April. Yeah, we're like... We're getting to the point now. Yeah. So let's talk about Days Gone. We need to make an episode next time, maybe, of uh, Walmart Canada Leaks. What are they going to leak this time? Okay, all right, all right. I'm, I'm going to say it now. They're going to leak Splinter Cell again and get my hopes up and then I'm going to get crushed again. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, yeah, Days Gone he is out. Yeah. It's a 72 on Metacritic. Yeah. That sounds high. Yeah. Because <laughs> people are giving it eight fives. Like, okay. That's dismissive. I haven't played it yet. Yeah. Um, but, like, I saw no, Lucia Brown's IGN review, and I'm like, oof. Yeah, like, I was reading like, Patrick Klepek's yeah. review in progress. and oof. In progress? Yeah, he hasn't. Oh, no, I understand why, but, yeah. like. Oof, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, he's 20 hours in, and I was like, ooh. You know, like, Lucy played for 60 hours. I'm like, this, no. Yeah, like, yeah. And then, but, th- th- but then I'm hearing, um, I watched a, a small bit of the quick look from Giant Bomb, mm-hmm. and that, it seemed all right. There's like, it seems like the gameplay is all right, but doing it for 60 hours seems to be yeah. the Achilles heel to it. I wonder if it'll have the same effect on me that Far Cry 5 did, where I was like, this is really cool, this is really fun, and well, I'm done. Yeah. Like, like, maybe that'll be it. But, like, I like the idea, I don't know if you've seen any of the story stuff. I've seen some of it. The way that, like... There's not exactly a, a single storyline. There are multiple story threads that are happening, and you pick up a mission and you yeah. do that. And it, it's like a, it's more like a side quest storyline. But as you're playing through that side quest, it, you might do one part of that side quest that actually triggers everything else, or you get a completion on something else. And like it, it makes it, it feels like it was feels like that might have been what this game was about was Ben's attempt to maybe create a new type of story. Progression like system, yeah. yeah. Um, which seems interesting. I'm looking forward to actually seeing how that works, but it also seems complicated and honestly boring. Honestly, like, from what I've heard, everyone's like, the main quest is great. Everything surrounding it is blah. Um, Alana Pierce's tweet was like, this is a great first attempt. Like, if this is Assassin's Creed and if they do their Assassin's Creed 2 next time, yeah. or even if it's like a different game, but like more refined systems. <coughs> mm-hmm. Ben could make a great game, but like yeah. this is Sony's first "quote unquote" miss since Bloodborne came out. Like first party miss. I mean, Bloodborne's not first party, but is like it? unless you count Mac and Mac Two. <laughs> Mac Two counts. I'm always counting. <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, that's what current Excel announced. <laughs> Mac Three. Mac Three. Oh God. Um, um, but no. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, I guess it is. I guess like it is. Like, in terms of the big first-party stuff, like, since... Because, like, what have they, they, they released every year since the... <coughs> so, so, 2014... No, 2013. The end of 2013 system comes out. With with Shadowfall. With Shadowfall, which is... A fine game. Fine game. It's, it's Killzone fine. has been Killzone to that point. Yes. Um, so, then, 2014, they don't have a big release. 
pretty sure they don't. They miss that year because everything's in development. I remember that yeah. year being weird because everyone was like, there's no games. But, and there's no first party game. And everyone's like, what, what, what? Sony, you're going to fail. But then the following year was when, well, the following like so three 20, months, quarter yeah. was Bloodborne. Yeah, so 2015 and, is Bloodborne. And I think there's another one in there. Oh, uh, and on oh no, Uncharted's next year. I was going to say, Uncharted 4 is 2016, Horizon is 2017, God of War is 2018. 18. And then it's like Detroit in there. And Detroit is what it is. Like, yeah. it's not a miss, but it is a David Cage game. Yeah. Um, mm. And then, I'm just trying to think of the other. And Act 2 is an Act 2. Um, Ratchet and Clank. It's also great, 2016. But it's great. Yeah, no, that's, what I'm, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm going with. Like, yeah. more of the thing. Um, Crash. I think that kind of counts, but then kind of doesn't. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it released. It released yeah. f- as first party. Yeah. Um. It, it was. It wasn't for another year till they came out on yeah. Xbox and everything else. So, like, yeah, like everything done, like PlayStation funds has been good. good at the very least. Good to and great. then if not industry refining, yes, uh, defining rather. Yes. Yeah. Um. Like that's a pretty. <laughs> but then this just comes yeah, out and like, I mean this Bleh. this feels inevitable then like in my book I'm like well they need to this, and like, 70... this is the least experienced studio as well like, they made two God of War oh, oh, that's not them mm-hmm. um, they made uh, Uncharted Gold on Abyss which is the second worst Uncharted game what's the worst Uncharted 1 like I do think Uncharted Gold on Abyss is better than 1 it's a little bit longer yeah 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 yeah, I always find it hard to to when people rank the the first in a series as the lowest. I'm like, but it was the first. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I, mean, I, always, I always add a bit of weight to well, if it wasn't for this game, the rest of these don't exist. <coughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. Add a little bit of weight to that, but no, I, I can. See I'm talking like on. actual quality of the game. I'm doing no, no, yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think, I think you might be right. Yeah. Um, and then like they did that, and then this is their first time making their own IP. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then. I didn't crush it, which is... Yeah, I think it's a bit... We- ah! No Man's Sky. Mm, they did fun <laughs> that. That was my criteria. <laughs> I found it! And even before 2015, there was The Order 1886. There yeah, was The Order. Yeah, I forgot about The Order. Everyone has. And there was another <laughs> game. Um, Infamous Second Son. Not- Infamous Second Son's not great. It's fine. It's it's a launch window title. Yeah, yeah. Like I love Infamous One, Two, and Festival of Blood, and even First Light. Yeah. Uh, but Second I think Son. Might be the thing here is that I feel like Days Gone was is a game that would be great two years ago. Yeah, two years ago slash in twenty fourteen when like Walking Dead and Sons of Anarchy and like just after, like a year after the console launch, like that would have been perfect timing. Also, but they just put out Uncharted then. I think the thing that really gets me about Days Gone is that I don't understand why a Sony executive didn't walk in and go like, are you doing the zombie thing? No, no, we already got a guy doing the zombie thing. Yeah. They're called Naughty Dog. They're doing The Last of Us. They're fine. Why don't you, um, I don't know, why don't you <clears throat> make them all green? Mutants or something. Turn them all aliens. Yeah. You know, put a thing that says like Mars present day at the bottom or something. <laughs> yeah. And just, just just don't make it a don't make it a zombie thing. Don't make it a zombie thing. Yeah. So I feel like that might actually be I think that was the biggest problem here is that like from first glance I'm like, I don't care. I'm not a zombie guy most of the time. But also if I am gonna play a zombie game, it's gonna be The Last of Us. It's not yeah. going to be days gone. To me, the zombies is a non thing because zombies at this point are always just background thing. They are the enemy. It's like, yeah, I just feel like you you could be more creative if you want to use just the zombie. Because the problem is, is that the, I think the trope still stands is that when you use zombies as your backdrop, you're either doing one of two things. You're either making it ridiculous, like a dead rising. Yeah. Um, or your storyline is, who's the real monster? Which the is human. Last of Us, Dying Light. But any other Last of Us also game. has a thing where it has like interesting zombie designs, like the yeah. cordyceps. Like that's a fucking yeah, brilliant yeah, yeah, yeah. design choice. Absolutely, absolutely. And but they, like, yeah. I, I guess I'm not. I'm not trying to denigrate the Last of Us. I'm no, 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 no say, that's what you're not going for. But yeah. like, it does the basic thing, but then it also excels at it. <coughs> whereas yeah. this is the basic thing. Which is the thing is like I think when you have some when you have something that does excel at a certain thing, why would you let your most inexperienced studio then try and tackle the same thing? Yeah. Like. Get them like my, 
in my mind, I feel like Days Gone would be a hundred percent more palatable to the general public. Palatable population. is a great word. Yeah. Yeah. If um, if they had just gone, just I don't know, make it neon, make it sci-fi, make them aliens, go the opposite direction, and do everything that you're doing already, just go the opposite direction. You can still do the cool bike stuff. You can still do yeah, like even in the future thing, like they retro bikes, like they yeah. don't want you fucking cool hovercraft. Be, be that be that Will Smith character from iRobot. Yeah. So you're the only one that's driving a regular yeah. bike because you fucking hate technology. Whatever it is. Yeah. But, like, yeah, just the fact that they stuck with present day zombie apocalypse, it just it looks and feels like a Last of Us spin off. Yeah. And that. Or a game we've already played. Like, that's the yeah. thing that I've heard most often. Like, like, this is great for, like, early this gen. I'm like, yeah. which means we, like, all the growing points, like, we moved past. I'm like, I mean, I hear the. I hear the bike controls well. Yeah, but like, what that? I, like that sounds good. But like, it damages easily. Like, you try and run into a zombie and your bike gets damaged. Like, what's the fucking point if I can't? Like, and I don't think there's any upgrade to like, like the upgrades to like make it worse uh, to make the damage less. But there's right. no like, you can't put like a, like a sword in front of your bike and or then a just battering ram. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's not Dead Rising, so I wouldn't expect. It. I don't know. But like, I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve judgment until I actually yeah. play it. I'm gonna see what else it is. It seems disappointing it seems like a disappointing release but it also doesn't seem like Sony was really they weren't pushing it hard yeah, like, like it, but I think they knew what it was I'm like hey with the game coming together we'll try and help you as much as it can um, yeah it like, didn't seem like they were banking on this one yeah exactly like this was just this is another I'm, I'm gonna yeah I wanna have a look at it because I feel like the way they the way they kept portraying it it feel like there was something about this game that made someone at Sony go that yeah we're putting this game out because of that yeah and I want to see what it is yeah what it is about this game that made them do that and then also because that will be the starting point for whatever they do next yeah and that will be the cool thing yeah. so yeah I'm, I want to see it we um, already talked a little bit about um yeah Star okay. Wars Jedi Fallen Order I mentioned it once I mentioned it once it looks cool. It looks fine. I, I want to see actual gameplay. Yeah, it's a CG trailer, so man. There was like one bit of like what looked to be in-game stuff where he's like grabbing the guy from behind. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, this looks cool. But then he's like, and then Vincent and Pella's like, it's not a stealth game. Like, there's no stealth in it. That sucks. Because it's a Jedi no, game. It's yeah. all about like sneaking around, like not revealing yourself. Well, he said he said it's not a stealth game. He said also said there's no stealth. Like, there is no stealth. But then they also said, what was the quote thoughtful action? I think it was yeah. what they what yeah they that's to that's it yeah so maybe not stealth but like I don't know I don't know uh, I I love stealth and I always love the option to do even if it's like rudimentary stealth yeah like I can't think of any like Far Cry is popping in my brain yeah yeah um yeah like it'd be cool to do stuff like that especially in the thing where like you're trying to stay hidden yeah um so yeah like the thing is I don't it looks all right it looks better than I expected. EA being like, no microtransactions, no loot box, make you want to puke. Fuck. I just rolled my eyes so hard. I'm just like, oh, Fuck whatever. Like, you. you aren't the good guys here. No, you, you made. You haven't even neutraled yourself out yet. Yeah. You went, like, they went by the Antarctic and, like, dumped a gallon of oil in the sea and then were like, oh no, I'm cleaning the birds. Like, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck me, yeah. No, you don't get to. And I've really got, I've really angry. Um, and it was EA that put out that tweet. Not if it was um, Respawn, I'd be less. Yeah, like, Respawn. It was, it was they're EA. cool at the moment. Like yeah. they haven't fucked up. Yeah. No, but it was, EA is a fuck up. I got super angry yeah. at the fuck. Okay. Well, okay. This is it's Reddit. So okay. It's already a dumpster fire. But there was just this. I don't know. This this weird element in the in both the R games and R gaming subreddits. Where there was this weird, like, backlash of, like, trying to defend EA. And I couldn't figure out why. And I think what it was, I think what it actually was, was a bunch of Star Wars fans who were really hoping this will be the good game. Trying to defend it because they don't want... They don't want this game to get shit on just because it's EA. And I get you, and I see you, and I understand (laughs) you. I do. But fuck EA! Like, seriously, like, come on. Like, like... You cannot give them a pass. You cannot sit there and say, like, oh, you know, they're not doing it this time. It's like, no, because they did it every other time. They've caused the problem, and them just not doing the thing that they've been doing all the time isn't, like, they're being a basic, basic game company at this point. We are 
was the thing that my parents always told me was that like you shouldn't you shouldn't get praised for doing your fucking job. Yeah. And at this point, EA releasing the Star Wars game is just them doing their fucking job. Yeah. So I'm not going to praise them for it, and I'm not going to um, give any hyperbole to it until it comes out. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, I hope it's great. Me too. Really Respawn is a great studio. It's being head by Stig from God of War Three, the director. Yes, of the, yes. I God of War Three is a great game. Like it's not the best God of War, but, no, it's, but it's good. It's solid. Yeah, it's solid. Although that being said, I think someone said this already, but like thoughtful action is not what I think of when I think God of War Three. It's much more button mashing. Mm-hmm. But to hey, me, hey. like that indicates like he knows what an action <laughs> game is, mm, thus yes. can bend the genre. Yeah, yeah, and like it, it's. Man, if, if this is just what it is on paper, which is a game where I can be a Jedi, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Even if it's like I'm okay with like the low, the- like low level, like you never completed your training. You're not Star Killer. No, you're like Kanan from yeah, Star Wars Rebels, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Kanan's a cool character. Yeah, uh, Cameron Monaghan, he's a good actor, mm-hmm. so it's cool to see him in a video game. He's uh, in Shameless as a yes, great character he's fantastic. and he's also in Joker like yeah. no sorry he is the Joker in Gotham and that show uh, is what it is it's fucking weird mm-hmm. and the final Joker version looks stupid yeah. but he can play the Joker well yes, regardless yeah. of he's whatever a, they throw at him he's a fantastic actor yeah. I've got no no. I've got all the confidence in the world in, that, in them and that team Yeah, I just until this game releases yeah in fact not even then until this game has been out for like three or four months and has not <laughs> been kerfuckled with by EA I will not trust anything yeah because they, like they say like no my transfer, we don't plan on putting them in yeah, you don't plan to right now until the game is really really popular and then you throw in some microtransactions at the back end which is not what we do or you know until the game has a season pass because I don't remember season pass being in that tweet it said loot boxes, microtransactions. Yeah. Again, as a character, as a person who likes single player content, mm-hmm. that's fine. And if it's like expansion of the story, yeah. But I if, guess. if it that's worked for open world games, I think as something yeah. like a linear game, DLC has rarely worked for a linear game. Like Minerva's Den is pretty much it. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever play single player DLC yeah. ever. Because, like, I bought your game. I'm not paying any more for it. I appreciate what you play, yeah. like, what you put into the game. If you wanted me to see this content, you should have just put it in the actual yeah. game. Because I'm not going to see it. Um, but, yeah, that's got a release date. Yeah, I forgot to write it down. It's, like... Uh, it's the 15th of November. Okay, yeah. Star Wars time. Yes, the 15th of November, 2019, is when that game will be coming out. Um, PS name changes are real, but it hurts. Yeah. Have you not seen all the shit, how it, like, fucks up your... Yeah, but we knew that going in. Yeah, here. but, like... They, they messaged the shit out of that. Yeah, and, like, keeps going, and I'm like, I want to change, but... Also, I wrote this really late, or really early, I don't remember, so... <laughs> I, you couldn't funny, think of the right word for that. Yeah, no, but the funny, the funny thing was is that they had a bunch of things of, like, these are all the games that have problems that we... Like, they said they had problems, they just didn't list what they were. Yeah. And, like, that was the real issue there, was that they should have just listed what the problems were. Yeah. Because the problem is, like, your name may not actually change in this game. Well, fucking, I don't care, yeah. man. Whatever. Yeah. But, like, the, the, the biggest thing was the... All games, like, the initial announcement was all games after 1st of April 2018 will yeah. support this feature. Yeah. And then they had to come out and say, it's not going to do it. We, there's a couple of things that are fucked up and we mm-hmm. well, well fuck uh, I'm like okay whatever it's I just mean that I'm not changing my name till another five years until they work out more of the kinks of the no, system just everyone get over it like everyone like in the same way that we all realise that your your hotmail account from when you were 12 is never good and we all just accept that about each other yeah. and just move on like when you have lucky horsey 95 is your thing and everyone's like yeah, alright and you yeah. just like, like when I was working in retail and you have to ask for someone's email address and they, they straight face give you a you know little pony princess 95 and they're a 37 year old woman and you're like we, we just accept it we accept that we made bad decisions when we were children and we will move just the same thing should happen to this everyone should just accept that your gamer tag is not you and we'll just move on because like there's nothing we can do yeah. apparently so fuck it yeah I just want to say I had my name is my first email 
and then I just switch to a Gmail, and then everything's fine. I just nice. type everything yeah. forward to it, and I'm just Keenan Johnston. Nice. That's, like I don't, that's really smart, because yeah. I didn't, but I did. But I also didn't get an email to, like, I was old enough for Facebook, actually old enough for Facebook, and then right. I'm like, you want an actual real <laughs> thing, you don't want yes. some yeah, bullshit. Yeah. I'm like, thanks, mum, for your good advice. <laughs> I'm on Facebook now, See, and then my life my sucks. That. I'm like, you just need to... Like, for the first email address is going to be your first name dot your last name at this thing. Yeah. Like, do not do the dumb thing. You can you can make alt accounts so you can watch Netflix for nine years without paying? Yes. That's fine. Yes. I'm ha- happy for you to scheme the system. Yes, yes. But I have an actual But for one. God's sake, have a, have a legitimate email address. Yeah. Um, 